I'm Shea Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is Julian Woodcock, the Managing Director for Viking Mines. Julian, how are you today? I'm great, thanks Shea. How are you? Good, thank you. Julian, great to have you back on. I thought it would be a good chance if we could sit down and talk about three of the most common questions when it comes to vanadium, which is what Viking Mines is developing with their cane grass project out in Western Australia. And I guess one of the most common questions I'm sure you hear all the time is, what is vanadium? That is a very common question that I receive. Uh, vanadium is a metal that's used primarily in the steel sector as a hardening agent, which is added to the iron and then increases the strength of the steel that's subsequently produced. Um, and that's, that's where the mainstay production has been for a very long time. Um, that consumption of that is, is not so significant to, in terms of growth. It's only maybe one and a half percent, two percent growth a year. Um, but the other key thing about vanadium is it's got some very unique chemical properties that make it the perfect choice for what's called a, a redox flow battery. Um, and this specific chemical properties allow it, you to store it in uh, the energy in one form of vanadium and then you move the electrons into another form of vanadium and that's how the batteries work. So the battery sector is the real growing space and that's what we're most excited about. Um, I know that you mentioned vanadium is used in steel. Can you explain the market demand difference between vanadium going into steel and obviously this potential opportunity of vanadium going into these batteries? Yeah, so as I touched on, the um, steel currently consumes about 90% of the global supply of vanadium. Um, and that's on this steady, very mundane growth of uh, sort of one and a half, two percent a year. Um, but the battery sector has really grown substantially over the last few years. So uh, about in early 2020s, it was probably only one or 2% of the global production was going um, of the vanadium going into batteries. And as recently as last year, it was over 10% is forecast to have or expected to have gone into the battery sector. Um, and this is just growing substantially year on year. The key driver behind this, um, as always, is, is driven predominantly by China. Um, China have announced last year a whole series of gigafactories that are going to make these redox flow batteries. And when you look at the output of all these factories that are now in development, um, they're going to consume, if they're, if they're full production, uh, the equivalent of our annual supply of vanadium that's going into the steel sector at the moment. So in a couple of years when these factories are online and they're pumping out these batteries, um, they're going to require a doubling essentially or greater of the vanadium that's produced annually. Um, and the forecast is is that it will be even greater than that by the end of the decade. Um, we're going to need in excess of a doubling, maybe even close to a tripling of the supply in order to meet the forecasted energy consumption demands to go into these batteries. Uh, Julian, to me, that sounds like there's going to be an upcoming uh, supply and demand imbalance. Tell me, do we have any chances of being able to meet this demand? Um, that's a really good question. And there's, there are a number of vanadium projects around the world, but um, I would say immediately no and um, there's been big spikes in vanadium price historically when there's been a sudden shift in demand and um, like very substantial uh, spikes that have occurred when for example countries have changed the legislation and increased the amount of vanadium that has to go into their steel to meet building regulations and the like you see these big spikes coming up and then they settle back down as supply is brought in but at this stage uh, no i would say there's a number of prospects of mines that could come online but um, they're certainly not shovel ready and ready to produce. So my, my view is that, yeah, we're going to see a supply crunch and that's why we're heavily invested in the project that we have that we believe is going to contribute to that supply shortfall. Uh, before we lightly touch on your cane grouse project, I do want to just talk about um, the price of it. You mentioned it in your, your answer just then. Now, I gather vanadium isn't like gold or copper, which have um, deep liquid active spot markets. Uh, what is vanadium worth and you know where can people find out more about the pricing? Look, the price for vanadium is, um, as you mentioned, is, uh, is very opaque. Um, there isn't a spot market per se in the sense that it's, it's traded as a commodity in its own right. Uh, so the agreements that are in place are offtake agreements with suppliers to provide future contracts. However, there is a, a website that I use that's imaginatively called vanadiumprice.com. Um, that gives us an indication of the health of the market and where it's going. So at the moment, Vanadium price is actually at, at quite a low level for the last number of years. Um, it's down at $5.20 US, that's just short of about $8 Australian a pound. 
Um, to put that in a tonnage perspective, uh, the price per ton equates to just over 17,000 Australian dollars. So it is a valuable commodity when you look at, say, um, copper at $10,000 and things. The, the value is significant. Um, but as I said, this is at a, a low point. So as recent as 14 months ago, the price was pretty much double that. Um, and you go back to 2018, um, price reached well over, I think, $30 a pound. So historically, it's, it's actually been at a much higher level. Um, on the price side of things, and I'm sure you'll ask me about my project shortly, but we've been looking at the price and we used um, the spot price or the, the pseudo spot price at the time to assess that project. So we're factoring in the current price with uh, any future outlook improvements on the price, which we believe will occur being significant upside for our project. And speaking of your project, I believe uh, once in passing, you mentioned to me that it has an extraordinary, uh, potentially long mine life. Uh, tell me, what attracted Viking Mines to the Cane Grass project? Yeah, look, I, I wouldn't brag about mine life. That's not in my nature. But um, <laughs> I, I think I said that we've got more tons than, than we need for, for a, a sensible assessment. Um, and for that, I mean, anything more than a 20-year mine life, uh, you don't really get valuation for it in your discounted cash flows. So, so we focused on that, that sort of realistic time frame. But yes, there are a lot of tons there. Um, the project attracted uh, or we were attracted to the project because we we're looking in the battery sector space um, the lithium market was both competitive in terms of finding advanced projects uh, as well as as we've seen in the last year or so there's been sort of wobbles on that front um, and really we see the outlook for this commodity as being potentially a, a future growth space that's not really had its day so I think I've said this before, lithium is a household name. People may not understand the chemistry or why it works or exactly where it sits on the periodic table, but everyone knows the word lithium. Everyone doesn't know the word vanadium. Um, but I think because of the significant advantages a vanadium battery has over lithium ion, um, it's much more suited as a workhorse for long duration energy storage. So for batteries that store power for eight to 12 hours, lithium batteries are not suitable for that application. We're going to see them adopted and we're going to see the name become a, a household name. Um, and for that reason and the supply shortages, I think we're going to see value in the commodity, which in turn means it'll have its day. So I like to think of it as um, a sort of an early mover type scenario that we've come in early before people are chasing the vanadium. And with that, we've secured a very substantial project that looks very promising. Uh, Julian, this has been a fantastic conversation. Uh, and hopefully you can pop on in the next couple of weeks so we can talk about the nuts and bolts of the cane grass project in more detail. Uh, but also too, I believe you are going to be at the Vertical Events Go uh, Investment Showcase on the Gold Coast in two weeks. Yes, um, we'll be heading out there. Looking forward to getting out to the Gold Coast. It was a good conference last year um, and hopefully look at attracting some investors. So I'll happily catch up with you there and see if I've got some other show and tell to bring. Um, and yes, I definitely would like to take the opportunity to uh, have some further chats in regards to explaining a bit about the project and the opportunities it brings. Uh, awesome. Listen, it was great to have you here, Julian, and we'll speak again soon. Thanks for being here. Thanks very much, Shay. Yeah.